Hello scholars, welcome back, Mr. Hinkle here, talking about igneous rocks. Quick review. There are three types of rocks in the rock cycle, and igneous rocks are rocks that cool from a melt. There's two types of igneous rocks, igneous intrusive, meaning the rocks cooled underneath the surface of the earth, and igneous extrusive, where rocks cool on the surface of the earth. Now, if igneous rocks cool from a melt, how do we get a melt? A melt is a liquid form of the rock down underneath the surface for igneous rocks. It's called magma. So how do we generate magma? This is the point of our lecture today. The processes that transfer solid rock to liquid melt in Earth's mantle, and then how magma composition can vary through the process of both melting and solidification. So let's talk about it. First off, what is magma? Here's the surface of the Earth. We'll call this a magma chamber feeding a volcano. Magma is liquid rock underneath the surface of the Earth, and it is composed of three parts. It has the melt, there are solids, minerals that have crystallized out, and we'll get into that process at the end of this lecture, and then volatiles, which are dissolved gases in the magma. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur, chlorine, they change the uh, chemical characteristics of what's going to occur, leading to explosive versus effusive type eruptions, but we'll save that for volcanoes. For now, magma is formed of melt, solids, and volatiles, and it is this melt that turns into igneous intrusive and extrusive rocks. An important thing to know in this discussion is that from the surface down to the center of the Earth, it gets hotter. It gets a lot hotter. It's called the geothermal gradient. Geo, Earth, thermal, heat, gradient, a variation. In Earth's uh, crust, about every kilometer you go into Earth's interior, it's about 25 degrees Celsius. You can actually map out the temperature versus depth from the surface of the Earth all the way down to the core. This is in Kelvin, and it gets down to about seven or up to about 7,000 degrees Kelvin. That is very, very hot. It's hot in the center of the Earth because when the Earth forms, it was really hot, a big hot ball of homogeneous material that then cooled. The dense, uh, the heavier material sank to the middle, lighter material floated to the top. This is called density stratification. And ever since that plate, Earth has been moving and transferring heat through its interior and releasing excess heat from radioactive decay of the elements that are located inside of Earth's core. So, center of the Earth is hot. There's a gradient from the surface to the center called the geothermal gradient. Now, when things get hot, they melt. But in Earth's interior, <clears throat> it doesn't just melt everywhere. It only melts in certain locations, process-based. There are three processes that are going to take the solid mantle made of peridotite, and in certain locations in the upper mantle, cause the mantle to melt, creating magma. <coughs> These three processes are decompression melting, flux melting, and then heat-induced melting, and let's talk about them. So, decompression melting. This is where the temperature remains cons constant, but the pressure decreases. So this could happen, say, at a mid-ocean ridge. Oceanic crust, oceanic crust, magma. It's thin, 
So there's a lot less pressure of overlying rock above the magma chamber causing this location to melt. Same thing happens at continental rifts. Same thing happens at mantle plumes or hot spots like Hawaii or Yellowstone. So decompression melting is when overlying material is removed, decreasing the pressure, but the temperature remains the same, causing the mantle material to melt. Flux melting. This occurs at convergent plate tectonic boundaries, where you have a descending slab of oceanic crust going deeper, so it's getting warmer because of the geothermal gradient, but the process of oceanic crust living at the bottom of the ocean, collecting all kinds of marine sediments, infuses the crust with volatiles, specifically with water, and the interaction of depth, water, and subduction creates magma through the process of flux melting. That magma now has a lower density than all the surrounding rocks and ascends upward to feed volcanoes. This is why we have continental volcanic arcs located at convergent boundaries. How is that magma generated that feeds the volcanoes um, at a convergent plate tectonic boundary? Well, it happens because of flux melting of the descending slab. We're thinking about our three processes. One, we've got decompression. Let's just put these up here, writing them on the board because they're important to know. Two, flux. And then three is going to be heat induced. It's like when you have hot magma, it can heat up the surrounding rock and that can then melt the adjacent or nearby rock Kind of like when you inject hot fudge into a sundae, it melts the ice cream because the fudge is hot and the ice cream is cold, but the fudge heats up the ice cream so it gets a little bit melty inside. Heat-induced melting occurs at mantle plumes and also hot spots. So this is our third big type, and that makes sense. When something is hot, it can melt the surrounding material. Really, it's where do we have volcanoes? We have them at divergent boundaries, and we have them at convergent boundaries, and we have them at hot spots. So what generates the magma below in the magma chamber that feeds the lava that erupts as a volcano? Well, it's the processes of decompression melting, flux melting, or heat-induced melting. Not every volcano is erupting the same kind of material because melts vary. And they vary because of the processes that melt the rock and then also the processes that turn that melt into a solid rock again. So rock can melt and rock can crystallize. Igneous rock this is. And so these processes of melting and recrystallizing change the composition and the composition is going to be initially based on the source rock. It's kind of like this. Here we see in this image, we've got various types of plastics and metals of varying degree. Apply heat, plastics are going to melt first. Keep applying heat, the metals are going to melt last before you have a homogeneous mixture. This can change the composition of that melt. Now, we have completely melted rock, and it's going to cool into an igneous rock. Well, crystals start to um, develop, solidify, and because of density differences and different temperatures, you get different crystals uh, precipitating or forming along the way, which will actually change the composition. So here, we have a lot of magma with the composition. Certain minerals crystallize out. And then the resulting composition is going to be very different. So if this were feeding a volcano, the solids would say the melt would now feed the volcano, creating a very different composition of that extruded material than 
of the original magma. Okay. I imagine this is a bit of a confusing conversation. I think long and hard on this one. It's what I dream of at night. Not really, but I do find it really fascinating. Okay, so you've got solid rock that melts. And then melted rock, oop, not that melts, that melts. Then solid, uh, melted rock becomes solid. So you've got the process of melting that changes the composition and then the process of solidifying, crystallizing, that changes the composition. This is how we have different rocks all over the surface of the Earth. Even though they have relatively average compositions, granitic rocks for continental crust, basaltic rocks for oceanic, there are always slight differences. This is where the complexity comes in and the fun really happens. So from solid to melting and melting to solid, there is a gradient of temperature in the earth and there is also a relationship between the temperature and the minerals that are going to develop. Discovered by Norman Bowen, he realized that minerals crystallize when cooled and minerals melt when heated and there is a direct relationship between mineral development and temperature. He put it all together in Bowen's reaction series and what's, ah, pens everywhere. What's important to know here is we can see composition. Please see my video on uh, igneous composition. Ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, felsic. These are going to be depending on the amount of silicon and oxygen, iron and magnesium. Over here we have temperature. Very high to low. So at high, high temperatures, you get certain minerals so the temperature is up here on 1,500 degrees Celsius. Bring it down to 1,300, olivine crystals grow. These minerals are still going to be melted. Bring it down another couple hundred degrees. Pyroxenes will develop. Felsic minerals still melted. So on and so forth to amphiboles, biotite, and then we get into our lighter color minerals that are the last to crystallize at cooler temperatures. Since these are the last to crystallize, that's why we see a lot of these minerals in continental rocks where the crystallization is relatively quick and we see a lot of these in deep oceanic rocks where they're forming from the mantle and then there's a relatively rapid cooling that doesn't have the time for these minerals to develop. So why does all this matter? How do I tie this all in together? Geologists are interested in understanding how the earth forms, processes that are acting on the earth. And we can pick up a rock and say, based on the composition, I can interpret the geologic environment, the history, the cooling rate, and the processes that generated the magma that turned into this rock. So now I've learned a lot by looking at this rock, observing its characteristics, the mineralogy, the composition. I can see what type of rock it is. It's an igneous rock, knowing how it formed, and then using that to develop geologic history and tectonic setting in order to understand a small piece that contributes to the greater story of Earth history. So this is magma generation, three types, decompression, heat induced, and flux melting that are associated with plate tectonic boundaries that allow us to understand the processes that create magma, that feed or end up turning into our igneous rocks. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.